Humans like to push things to the extremes, but the 10 terrifying places on this list really do take the cake when it comes to living on the edge. From sub-zero conditions to war zones and even huge graveyards, these are some of the scariest and most extreme places to live in the entire world. Oimiakan If natural extremes were a competition, this Siberian town would take the gold. Possibly the silver and bronze too, if we're honest. Home to 500 people and known as the Pole of Cold, Oimiakan is the coldest permanently inhabited settlement in the world. Days here swing between 3 and 21 hours long, and in the winter, temperatures can plummet to minus 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 58 degrees Celsius. This is a town so cold, in fact, that no crops can be grown. Inhabitants live on reindeer meat, game, and fish. The temperatures recently dropped below negative 72 and broke the public thermometer, which had been installed in the town as a tourist attraction. This isn't the coldest it has been, however, as Oimiakan took the record for the coldest temperature in the Northern Hemisphere, when temperatures dropped to minus 89 degrees. This tiny and hardy town is fairly new, too. Before 1920, this was merely a rest stop for reindeer herders who came to water their herds at the nearby hot springs. Gulan Refugee Camp Otherwise known as the camp that is also a minefield, Gulan Refugee Camp probably takes the cake for unappealing places to live. Let's be honest, no one wants to live in a refugee camp, but if you had to pick one, you probably wouldn't choose Gulan. This seemingly unoccupied field was first settled by refugees displaced by brutal conflict in Afghanistan in 2014. What they didn't realize was that this field had been the site of a huge battle between the Mujahideen and Soviet forces in the 1980s. It was still littered with anti-tank and anti-personnel mines. Perhaps the most remarkable thing of all, however, is that not one of the 24,000 refugees currently living in the camp has lost their life due to a mine explosion. This is in part due to the removal efforts, which removed a staggering 1,000-plus mines in the first 12 months, and probably has a lot to do with sheer luck. Zabalin There are few places in the world which are truly outside of the law, but Zabalin in Cairo, Egypt, may well be one of them. Sometimes called Trash Town, Zabalin is mainly populated by Coptic Christians, who are a minority in Cairo. This is a city of trash collectors, literally. The people of Zabalin make their money by collecting and sorting refuse from all over the city of Cairo. They salvage and sell what they can, feed organic material to their pigs, which also provide a source of income and sustenance, and collect a fee from the city for doing so. While life is hard in Zabalin, with many children starting to work with their families at 10 to 12 years of age, it has gotten slightly better as of late. For a start, the attempted privatization of the city's refuse collection, which began in 2004, has ended, and the Zabalin now have their livelihood back. Secondly, many collectors in Zabalin are now being officially recognized. So, while life in Cairo's trash town is definitely hard, it's nowhere near as terrifying as it used to be. The City of the Dead If we told you that there are people who literally live in a graveyard, you would probably tell us to pull your other leg, right? Well, believe it or not, it's true. Over half a million people now live in a 7th century necropolis just outside of Cairo, Egypt. At first, residents moved into Cairo necropolis, Karafa el Arafa, in the 1960s because rapid industrialization caused mass migration into Cairo. At this point, the city was ill-equipped to deal with the influx, and so people made do. The population of the necropolis jumped once again in 1992, when a huge earthquake caused damage and forced many people to move into family tombs. Living conditions are better now than they were in previous years. The city now has shops, schools, and electricity thanks to a nearby mosque. Sanitation is still an issue for residents, however. And while this arrangement is wildly legal, and there are plans to relocate the inhabitants, the truth is that there are precious few places for them to go. Living in a literal graveyard takes fear of the dark to a whole new level we're willing to bet. Musharu Village, West Bengal there are many kinds of terror in the world. Fear of the supernatural, fear of the dark, irrational phobias, fear of death, and of course, fear of huge venomous snakes. If you have ophidiophobia, meaning a fear of snakes, you should probably steer clear of Musharu village in Barthaman district, West Bengal. This is a village filled with huge, highly venomous snakes of many types. How, you ask, have the snakes come to be so populous here? 
Well, it's an interesting story which has much to do with Bengali culture. The villagers here believe that the snakes are an incarnation of the goddess Jankaswari. And as such, the serpents are considered so holy that no one but members of a specific Brahmin priest family may handle them. A result of this necessary and peaceful cohabitation is that the snakes have little if any fear of humans. They are remarkably docile and often enter the homes of locals. In fact, the locals claim that the snakes simply do not bite them and that if they do, this can be remedied by swimming in the local pond, fasting and applying mud. Whether or not this works, we're unsure. But we reckon we'll leave Musharu village well alone. Aleppo, Syria Of all the places to live in the world, Aleppo has to be the most frightening and deadly. While it's true that Aleppo is no longer an active battlefield as it was between 2012 and 2017, and things have become marginally safer, this is by no means a safe place to live. Life in Aleppo is hard and dangerous. Electricity, heating, running water, and internet connection are scarce in supply. Schools and libraries are, if still standing, under fire, and for many people, getting something as simple as a hot meal is a matter of queuing at communal kitchens, which feed up to 30,000 people per day. There are few places in the world which test human resilience quite like Aleppo. Rusinovo Found in the Kaluga region of Russia, Rusinovo is an entirely unique town, just 70 miles from Moscow, which first came into being in 1948. The Soviet Union had an idea, you see, which seemed great on paper. They would build a town which was adapted to suit the blind and visually impaired. They did this and in fact, many people came from all over Russia and indeed the Soviet Union to live and work in Rusinovo. So far so good, right? Well, these days, Rusinovo is not so much a town as a ghost town. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, the Borovsk Educational and Manufacturing Facility Factory thrived on a partnership with Rubin, a TV factory in Moscow. Since Rubin shut down, however, and the majority of Russian factories have moved to automated assembly, the factory and the fortunes of Rusinovo has declined. Today, many residents live in dire conditions in unrenovated communal apartments with no one to help them keep their homes in order. Rusinovo was pegged as a paradise for the blind, but in truth has become more of a paradise lost since the decline of the factory. The scariest thing about this town is that many of the residents simply cannot escape. Linta Vincenza, Italy Linta takes its rightful place on this list for one reason, its size. As a tiny village found 0.8 miles outside of the town of Asiago, to which it belongs, Linta consists of just 29 full-time residents. That's right, only 29 people live here. 10 of those people are single, 3 have university degrees, and absolutely no foreigners. Furthermore, there are no banks, no pharmacies, and only 2 commercial buildings. In fact, there are only 10 buildings, the first of which was built in 1946 in this village. Imagine falling out with your neighbors in this village. Exclusion Zone, Pripyat, Ukraine In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor experienced a critical failure that led to the worst nuclear meltdown in history. The town of Pripyat, just over the border in Ukraine, was home to tens of thousands of people, mostly workers and their families. Most evacuees now live in Slavutich, a nearby town built for them but over 1,000 people returned, illegally, to live in the exclusion zone just a few months later. At first, the Russian government refused them entry, but eventually they caved in and let the residents, mostly older people, return to their homes. Today, over 30 years later, 130 people still live in this radioactive area of Ukraine. And funnily enough, some studies suggest they are living longer and better than their previous neighbors. This is not too surprising. After all, if you discount the radiation and free-roaming bears and wolves, life in Pripyat has to be full of fresh air and exercise, right? Aogashima, Japan It's true that all the places on this list are scary in their own incredibly unique ways. But Aogashima Village is the most terrifying for natural reasons. This tiny village, home to just 200 people, is 200 miles south of Tokyo situated on the most remote of the Japanese islands, and is connected to the mainland by ferry and helicopter. It's lush, it's green, and it's found inside the outer crater wall of an active double volcano. Yep, that's right, 
These 200 intrepid souls live in the shadow of fiery death every day. In 1785, the volcano erupted and killed half of the population of the island. Now, it hasn't erupted since then, and there are some benefits to living on an active volcano. Free heating and cooking facilities, natural hot springs, and of course, peace and quiet. Until the sudden firestorm that may or may not occur at any time. Scientists reckon that the volcano is dormant and that it will stay that way for the foreseeable future. But we're going to steer clear anyway. If you want more content like this, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And remember to click that bell so we can let you know when we have more weird and wonderful discoveries to share with you.